all sorts of magic happening. Let me check on this and see if the video, see how the sound be. Give me one second. Can I actually check it over here? Here we go. Oh, we got sound. We're good to go. We're good to go. Let me put up chat. Hold on. You're not on. You're not on screen yet, baby girl. You are not on screen yet. So we're going to talk about. I'm a little bit late to this party. The uh, let me bring the hurricane on. Let's make sure she's she's scraped. Um, bang bang. How are you, Hurricane? I'm doing good. <laughs> In your bubbles. <laughs> I <feel a> bubble <laughs> what have you had done today? Ooh, well, actually, this week I had yes. my hair colored, cut. I actually took quite a bit of length off, but it was really nice and just a, a refresh. I got my eyebrows done. I had a really nice facial. I had my eyelashes tinted. Just a few things that make me feel really nice, you know, and I'm feminine. Um, I bought some new earrings and. Um, well, who knows by the end of the week there's other things i could do so we'll see we'll see well but you it's know really nice it's really nice just to stop um i love my lifestyle but it is also it also makes me appreciate uh stopping and just spending a little time for me so it's just nice the fluffy well, time. Great. the foo-foo time i like a, i like to be a little bit foo-foo i do I know you do. I know you do. I'm tough as nails and foo foo on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. But yes, it's fierce, are. definitely fierce and fluffy. <laughs> fierce and fluffy. Yes, ma'am. You yes, are. Yes. Part of this stream, she can actually speak to directly because she was yes. in a different country that in that country, she also had some of the same problems this driver had. Most of the folks know this, know the story. It's been all over the news for the last two weeks. Uh, it's been all over the news for two or three years because the guy took a while to get to court. He was not a very good speaking, uh, English speaking Latino. And uh, he came down a hill in his CMV and he lost his brakes. He had multiple chances to pull over, which we're going to talk about. And he didn't. And he stayed on the road and ended up getting to the bottom and smashing into people. He could have. Here's what he could have done. If you've watched the footage of the incident, he could have hit the exit ramps, but I have a reason why he didn't hit the exit ramps. He could have uh, run off the road in some of the flatter lands because there was some uphills he could have pulled over and, and stopped. He could have run off the road in the downhills. And I'm going to talk about some of that in relation to flying a plane and, and some of these pilots that have gone down away from civilization. Um, but he got to the bottom of the hill and took out quite a few families. After a couple years in the trial, he was sentenced to 100 years, as most of you guys know. And then there was an outrage about that, which was kind of unique to watch from my perspective. And then that was commuted down to 10 years. So we're going to talk about all those things and be polite and friendly. And... uh Hold on one second. We're going to talk about a, a little bit of that. Troy, what's going on? Um, Troy, I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. You bet. You bet. But I want to talk about that in relation to Hurricane first, because she was in a different country, China, mm -hmm. and she did have to, you know, learn the language, which, you know, you didn't know it at the, at the, initially, did you, Hurricane? No, it took me... Um... It took me a little shorter than most people just because I was gifted that way. But it still took me at least at least six months to eight months to be able to really communicate uh, basics, you know, two years to be able to communicate um, most things. And then obviously with the tools that you have, like your iPhone and stuff, I could uh, use dictionary and get, get across what I needed to get across, you know, and, and then find out what I needed to say for certain things I didn't need to say, you know, so, but at least eight months, you know, to, to really understand what was going on, you know. What, what about, what about driving for you when you were over there and you began driving? First of all, driving is a privilege, regardless if you're an American, if you're an immigrant, if, if, uh, if I was a foreigner living overseas in China, it's a privilege because it's not a right, it's a privilege. And I've always learned that it's a privilege. And with that comes respect. 
Um, that's, that's all I can say. That's my opinion. Um, learning in China. Um, I mean, we, we were already learning. I think we were, you know, we were right. We were driving on the, the American side of the road, but for me, that was the opposite side of the road. So, you know, I was already learning how to drive on the opposite side of the road compared to the States and the States is still opposite side. It's still a privilege. But we, we had to learn a lot of things, a lot of things. First of all, we had to pass the test, which was quite vigorous, which was good. Thailand, it wasn't. But at the end of the day, um, if I hit someone, long story short, I'll end up in jail for the rest of my life in, you know, in a Chinese jail. So can you imagine what that means? You know, uh, without, I should probably shouldn't even say the country, but in one of those places, and you can imagine your worst nightmare is probably worse than that. So we'll just leave it at that. What you're imagining is exactly what could have happened. Um, and also we had a lot of problems as well with people running out and lying in front of the road because you were white, because you were foreign, not necessarily because you're white, but majority of people were, I hate to say that, but most of, you're a foreigner, you're a foreigner. And so um, you were the white woman, the outside person, the foreigner. Um, the guaido, the white ghost, you know, that's what they call you, you know, and so... Um, they call, wait, wait, slow down. You blew by those those terms very, very fast, and, and a couple of them I've never heard before. Okay, Like so you hear about, like, in that, Hawaii, they call said, like... Go, that's why I said white foreign. I didn't mean white versus black or anything like that. I meant that most foreigners are looked at as the white European, you know, the colonialist, but actually there's a lot of international people there there as well. So, but basically you're known as the white warren, which is the outside person, outside country person, a person from outside of the Zhong Guo, which is China, the central country of the world. Okay. That's mm -hmm. how they see it. The, China is called Zhong Guo, which means central country or the country that's in the center of the world. So obviously you can see how they think of themselves, which is, is cool. I mean, that's, that's, that's their, their <laughs> right. And then we're called the Wai Guo Ren, which is Wai Guo means to be outside Guo's country, the outside country from the central country. So we were foreigners. Um, again, they look at most foreigners as being the white colonials, just from the history and historical times. But, you know, there's a lot of international people that are foreigners. And then they call this, uh, that's the most, uh, not, I mean, I, I didn't find it as an insult. It just was the culture at the end of the day. Uh, they call us the guaylo or the, um, the, the white ghost because they believe that we were so white we looked like we were ghosts. Um, because, you know, if you've never seen anyone but an Asian person, all you've ever seen is Asian. When you see someone different, it's like, oh, what, what are these people? What color is their skin? You know, it, it's just curiosity. It's got nothing to do with racism. It's got nothing to do with a prejudice got nothing to do with anything. It's just curiosity because they've never seen anything other than their own people. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, it comes across all that. I, I, and please don't be offended by any of what I've just said. I don't mean that. I mean, I, I served and lived in that country 20 years and I love, I love Asian people. I love Asia. But um, yeah, so Waiwaren, which is the outside person. Could I, could I make a quick, could I make a quick aside? Yes, please. It is so cool in travel centers when you hear somebody speaking Chinese yes. and you turn to them and say something in Chinese and you can yeah. see their whole, like you, I, I've watched it. You, you see their whole face light up and they go, well, you speak uh, Chinese. <laughs> yeah, uh, off shot, there was a guy that came in and he's pointing to a, a photograph. This is just a quick story. He pointed to a photograph of a, a, a piece of his um, radiator, uh, you know, the um, the fluid, the, the I'm sorry, I'm, I'm tired. The uh, antifreeze fluid uh, for his radiator, it was like the hose part, and he was wanting a part, and he was replacing the whole piece. So he came into, uh, I think it was TA uh, servicing, and I was in there waiting for a tire to be replaced or uh, the ABS. I, I don't know. Anyway, I was waiting for something. And I'm right, I'm standing there, and he comes in with a photo, and they're like, Sir, we need the piece because it's a generic piece. We need to see how big it is, how wide it is, how long you need. And he didn't understand. He was like, no, I have a picture. You know, like he said in, in his language, I have, I have a picture that should be enough for you. And they're like, no, no, you need to go to your vehicle, go get it and bring it so we can see it. And I, I looked at him and I said, are you Chinese? Do you speak Chinese? He's like, yeah. Ha, ha. First of all, he was blatantly surprised. He's like, well, don't worry about that. 
what they are trying to tell you is you need to bring the piece, the actual physical piece in, and then they can see how long, how wide, how big, and how much you need. Oh, okay. So he just turns around and he takes it off and he comes back with a piece. And they were just enthralled that 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 I could uh, find in, which I could <coughs> translate just that basic bit, you know, just that go go to get a piece and bring it, you know, not true, I like bring it back over to us. So anyway, but yeah, it's cool. That's a side story. It but, is a um, side story. Uh, long story short, um, we figured that it, you know, if people lay in front of you and the family wants to come after you for money, um, I, and, I, and this is what they judge a life to be satisfied at. That's not got nothing to do with me. At the time, again, things have changed now drastically. You know, every year it changes. But at the time, it was about one million kwai or one million yuan. It's also known as one million URMB, and it was about like $130,000, $140,000. So if you had that amount of cash to pay, I hate to say it again, it's just how it worked, to pay off the family or to gift the family for a life that was taken on the road, then pretty much the authorities kind of let you be, the the family was happy, they buried their their loved one, and you were let go. Um, that that's how the system works. It's got nothing to do with me. It's got nothing to do with anything. It's just how the system works. Things may have changed by now, but um, basically, what what I did is paid a very very high premium on vehicle insurance that I actually almost had to argue to get because they're like, why would you need this much? And I told them I'm a foreigner. This is what it costs. Blah blah blah. So I paid a very very high premium, probably <coughs> ten times what most normal Chinese would pay for a vehicle insurance. So that if I hit someone, if someone laid in front of me and the police deemed that that was my responsibility, I had that one million quiet coverage to pay out because I didn't also didn't have one hundred forty thousand in cash in the bank, you know. Yeah. So I I just did the wise thing. It was a privilege to drive, and I I covered myself by the insurance <coughs> that they would pay it out, and I paid a high. I paid a lot of money compared to what I needed to pay, but that was my choice. Then I was covered, you know. Otherwise, go to jail until you pay it. And if you don't have the money, you ain't getting out of jail. <laughs> yeah, so there, there was there were repercussions for for uh, taking people off the earth yeah, in there, China there with, with, the tra like, with the traffic, there was the traffic accident. There some that chose not to drive because they didn't want to deal with the repercussions, you know? Yeah. So let's take that premise, which she's talking about right there. This trucker spoke very limited English. You can look at all the videos of him and let's even watch him in court. He spoke very limited English. Um, let me, let me preface this next part by saying when I went to the oil field, my first orientation down there, and I talked about this on the stream the next day, I think the woman doing the orientation, there was probably 40 people in there to pull sand and she's doing the orientation. She's walking around. There was probably over half the class was Latino. I mean, you're down there in, in uh, you know, in Texas, you're down there, you know, in the, in West Texas. It's a given. <clears throat> and she's walking around the room and she's she's asking people, the Latinos, questions in English. As an example, one of the guys who she ended up sending out of the class, and it was the first time I'd ever seen it as far as for CDL 18-wheel big rig <laughs> tractor trailer driving. It was the first time I'd ever seen it, but I also never been down in Texas, which is a you get South Texas, you get West Texas, it's a lot of Latinos, just a given. But she walked up to the guy, and as I forget what she specifically asked, but she asked in English something like, what color is the top that I have on? And it kind of caught me off guard, but then the guy looked at her for a minute and said, yes. And she's, no, 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 no. Okay, what color shoes do I have on? He looked back at her. Yes. So obviously he didn't speak English. The flip side too is he didn't have his own truck. He was driving for a company. So the company sent them there knowing exactly the situation he was in. Just hoping he would get through the ropes because it's more revenue. Let's hope he gets through the, the ropes and gets, you know, gets the revenue. He had his license, but he didn't speak English. One of my friends, one of my friends, a close, close dear friend sent me a text this morning and uh, said, because he watched the video 
where somebody was talking about this incident and it was a white guy speaking about the incident, not being mean, not being vicious, not being uh, attacking. But my friend is Cuban. And he's like, is this is this racist or is this true? Talking about what the guy spoke about, about this accident. And it made me think all day because the reality is I'm sitting there about to pull frac sand. And I'm with the guy in the class that didn't speak English. This driver that came down 70, let's just start with that. He wasn't able to comprehend English. Matter of fact, let me show you something while we got this little thing going. Okay. This is the first sign. If you watch, if you watch on the videos of this trucker coming down the hill on I-70, this is the first sign he passes. You can see it in the video of the car behind him that's following him. Okay. Do you guys understand that sign? Now, this sign was in English. I've made the sign Spanish for all of you folks that don't speak Spanish. If you saw that sign coming down that hill and you didn't speak Spanish and you're in a Spanish speaking country with Spanish speaking road signs, would you understand what that said? Now, what the gist of that sign says is truckers. For the next four miles, you have very, very sharp curves and very steep hills. But would you understand that if you didn't speak Spanish? Probably not. Now, let's see if this one pulls up. Does this one pull up? Uh, I'm going to go back to this. Let's go back to this for a second. So he's coming down the road. Hold on a second. Um, he's coming down the road, and in that coming down the road, he's not reading these signs because the next sign that comes up on the video of the car behind him, the next car that comes up is exactly truck uh, escape ramp. And he went by that. Actually, he pulled over to the left-hand lane to make a better turn because he was coming up on a left-hand turn, but there was a truck escape ramp. But he already doesn't speak good English, so he didn't read. He couldn't understand the sign. Hurricane, you said when you were first over there, you, you didn't understand the signs either, right? No, no. I, I mean, you know, I learned. I, I, so to learn Chinese, you still have to learn ten thousand separate characters. I learned to read about two to three thousand, so I could say the gist of a few signs when I knew the category that they were in. So if I knew that it was a restaurant, I could tell if it served rice, or if I could tell if it served seafood or certain meats. I had no idea about anything, what kind of meat, what kind of rice. You know, I may have been able to see shoe store, but you look inside the store as well. So, but the problem is I got used to very quickly in the very beginning stages, I got used to, and I'll have to say it, blindly ignoring signs, whether the shop signs, road signs, anything, because I didn't understand it. So it didn't, there was zero comprehension and I wasn't learning it at that time. So I didn't understand it. I didn't, I actually didn't see it, not blindly ignoring it. I didn't see it at all. Um, but when I was driving, obviously I know something that's, and that's what's cool about being international. I kind of understood it a little bit and paid attention, but I've always paid attention to the road because I was already on an opposite side of the road. I was already up to my neck in like risk. So I was trying to pay attention, you know, but, you know, there's a lot of times I had no idea what they were. I didn't know there was a tunnel coming up. I didn't know that there was a, you know, stop sign is red and it's a hexagon. Yeah, maybe, but I just kind of tried to follow what was going on, but I had no idea, you know, most, some of the stuff, things that were coming, you know, I had no yeah. idea some of the stuff. So. Now, let me, let me magnify that hurricane. You coming down that, that road with an 80,000 pound vehicle heading downhill. I, you know, personally, I, if I am knowing that I'm losing my brakes personally, I'm going to do everything I can, regardless of science, I'm going to do everything I can to not hit someone else. That's my, that, that would be my personal goal. I'm not judging anyone. I don't know the outcome. I don't know anything. I'm just saying, personally, I would try to get off the road as quickly as safe as possible, even at my, the risk of me compared to multiple people more than just me. I, I don't know. That's, that's my opinion, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, you can also use your mind and look at 
obviously a, a rabbit going off the side of the road. It's not a ski hill, so obviously it's got to be something. You know, I, I don't, I don't know. That's I'm well, not me... judging. I'm not judging. I don't know anything. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying my personal opinion. If I knew that something was failing and it was an eighty thousand pound vehicle, I would do my best to again distance, speed, and try and figure out how to get off the not cause any more harm than just myself. Right. Let me also say, and again, I'm not taking any, anything away from what you're saying, Hurricane, but no, as far absolutely. as this goes, the, the guy did not speak English uh, fluently. That's a requirement for the CDL. It is a requirement. It is. Yeah, it didn't, he, didn't, he didn't speak English. And then secondly, if you take this to the 80,000 pound you know, thing, even an aircraft pilot, most of them, if they get into trouble and they're over cities, they will try to crash land somewhere away from the city. You know, do they have more training? I don't know. Do they? I, I want to say. I want to say no. I want to say. You know what? Sometimes common sense has to take over. It should be, be better, common sense. Yeah. But... I'm better off. I'm better off. Like if you watch the video of him coming down the hill, besides he doesn't even understand the signs that they're going by him because they're written in English. He doesn't speak English. Well, let's just say he speaks five percent English. He's coming down the hill. He knows he's out of control. At what point do you say as common sense, you know what, I need to go ahead and take this into the ditch. I need to take this to the left or to the right, get into a grassy area or whatever area and let the truck do what it's going to do. You know, let's say you don't even know about the, the exit ramps, the, the escape ramps, because you're in Texas. and Maybe they don't have a lot of escape ramps in Texas because it is pretty flat. Um, we're 70 and 80 and, and uh, 90 and 40 are not flat coming over the Rockies. But at what point do you say, you know what, I, I, let's quit making excuses for the guy. Many, many people lost their lives because he did a lot of things wrong and he didn't speak good enough English in my mind to have a CDL in this country. But I remember witnessing that in the oil fields where his company sent him there to drive. So who's responsible? You know. Yeah, so who's responsible? And then another thing as well that might be relevant or not this again this is my personal opinion how we how we drive or drove in asia general um is probably very similar to maybe south america again it's just an assumption but it's very different from a lot of rules and regulations that we have in europe and we have in america that's all i'm going to say very blank you know broad spectrum and um the things that the things that I've witnessed go on with traffic and driving and stuff. Uh, it's not as it's not as uh, safe, uh, definitely, as it might be with some of the rules and the regulations that we have maybe in Europe or in America. I, I, that's all I'm gonna say. You know. Yeah. So, and Harold Backer, Harold Backer is making a comment here. And that, they're asking if you can touch the ceiling, Hurricane. Don't try. Don't try to touch the ceiling right now. Oh, okay. I fool for that <laughs> I'm leaving the comments up because they're not being mean about it. And I don't blame being, them. I don't want to. I don't, I don't, wanna, <laughs> I don't blame them. Um, Harold Backer is uh, saying if the CDL, if it's a requirement to have an English speaker have a CDL, how did he acquire it? Well, Harold, let's go back to. Who knows? No, let's go back to. He was he was based out of Texas. The driver was, and just like I saw at the oil field orientation, his company sent him there. I, I, you know, let's let's go back to let's go back to tribalism. Okay, every culture wants their culture to succeed. There's no way around that. So it doesn't make it right or wrong. You want your culture to succeed. So you're going to try and push somebody through and help them change your life and do better and get better and be better. Even if it means having to skirt some of the rules, you're going to push them through. You know, one of my friends when I flew in the military was Asian. And their whole community, when his parents landed here from, uh, from South Korea 50 years ago, the whole community, the whole Asian community helped them fund their restaurant they opened up. Because... Their, their community helps each other. There's no, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in the, in, but in this situation, because you are responsible for, like a lot of people lost their lives in that accident. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not on earth anymore because of that accident. I can't even imagine the families watching that sentence get reduced on the 10 years with all the people that 
had a really, really bad time. You know, I can't imagine it. So let me see what, uh, let me see what this guy says. Hold on, Johnny, on the flip side. The company filed right bankruptcy right after the, the accident and opened up. Listen, Johnny on the flip side. Bang. I'm going to leave it up for a minute. I didn't know that. I assume that. Wow. Well, I don't doubt it. So Johnny on the flip side says the sad part is about the whole thing. The company that he was driving for filed bankruptcy right away and then opened up under a new name and authority. That's 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 uh, that's that's some stuff right there. Let me show you guys some things. Hold on one second. Let me show you some things. I've got some. I've got some videos. I didn't like. I began looking at some things. You know, we assume that. Uh, hold on. Let me let me take this one off. We assume that these truck ramps are. You know, super safe, right? You assume that. Let me see if this is showing up on the screen. Hold on. Let me see what's showing up. Let me make this full screen. The, the hurricane is going to go from the screen right now. Some of you folks hoping she'll t touch the uh, the ceiling. You're not going to be able to see that. Uh, nope. <laughs> so hold on one second. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Let me make this full screen. These are escape ramps. Watch some of these situations. Because when I watched this, I didn't know. Let me put myself back up on camera. I didn't know that on these on these truck ramps, I didn't know how deep the, the sand or the dirt was. I've never thought about it. But I'm watching some of these compilation videos of people going up these truck, truck ramps. I mean, this truck's really getting really badly jammed up. So let's uh, let's put this back up. Hold on. Right there. Bang. And I'm going to start playing this video. And watch this truck come in. Watch what happens to this trucker. Here he comes. He's lost his brakes. Watch what happens to him. Are you ready for that? Watch this. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. I mean, he, you know, he almost rolled it. He almost rolled it. Let's see what this next one is. This guy's coming down. He's losing it. He's already lost his brakes. That's a that's a highway patrol behind him. Now he's into the he's into the pile of dirt and whatever else it is that they have to slow him down. They don't show it from the front or the side, just from the trooper's viewpoint. But you see that big dust cloud. So something bad happened. Yep, he rolled. Did you see that at the end? Did you see that at the end right there? You can see it if you slow it down. You see it right there. You see his truck. He's partially rolled his truck in the truck ramp. You know. And I had never really looked at that. I had never really looked at looked at these these accidents, these sites. Hold on. Let me get back to my stream yard. Let me pop that back up. That was that's and I've got some where they like a little box truck comes up one of these truck ramps, and the box truck truck flips end over end. It hits the deepness and starts flipping. The guy survived, but he gets out and he's all banged up on his face because he hit the windshield. You know, I'd never known that. I didn't know how bad it would get. I thought you ran up into it and it was just deep enough to catch the wheels and the tires, you know. So let's get a. Hold on. Let me see what Johnny on the spot said again. Yes, 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 I agree. I agree. So hurricane. Yes. I'm going to show I'm going to show one more video unless you have something else to talk about. What you got, girl? No, I, I think it's good. You know, I, I pampered myself. Uh, I was a foreigner in another country driving. I know that it's privilege uh, to be able to do that. I know the consequences. Um, yeah, I just paid extra attention, you know. Let me ask you this. You being five foot five, you know, one one twenty five, just five foot five and nothing. Just a little thing handling this big old 80,000 pound vehicle and realizing like you do, like you give people plenty of following distance. Yes. You get, you're, you're always a couple miles below the speed limit, no matter what the speed limit is, you're always three to five miles below. Yes. You know, and then you factor in going down a hill. Like you've, you've had some of these hills. Now we have very, we have brand new trucks that we're in. 
the engine brakes are really good. See, a lot of times you can run the engine brake the whole way down and really not even have to do a lot of, you know, uh, foot braking. But isn't it a whole different situation knowing how big this vehicle is coming down these hills, coming down yeah, the mountain? Yeah, I mean, I was living in, when I was living in China, I had a, like a forerunner, kind of like a forward drive, four wheeler, uh, SUV style kind of vehicle. So, you know, it's also a different world, but I wasn't commercial. I wasn't working, you know, I wasn't earning money. Um, whereas here, again, I'm still, uh, still a privilege as well. Um, but to be plowing at an 80,000 pounds, 75,000, sorry, 75 foot, 65 foot vehicle, it's it's something else, you know? And uh, you have to have a lot of respect uh, or respectful fear, but not fear. So you're, go, you know, you, you're kind of going whatever. Gosh, I think I lost my, it's okay, I'm still there. You're still um, there? Yeah, I just lost my view, but I can still see kind of where my head is. So no reaching for the skies here. Um, <clears throat> uh, but just he healthy respect, like, you know, um, even when I was kind of hitting some of the snow through the desert, just on the way back to before we started our bit, our uh, vacation, you know, there was some snow and there was, I was bucktail, so it was very light and I was sliding a little bit. So I, again, dropped my speed, made sure that I had plenty, plenty, plenty of space. And, you know, some of the more experienced and there's nothing wrong with that, come up right behind me. I'm not going to get bullied into going faster. If if that's the case, I will try to find a place where I can pull over and let you around. I'm not going to be an ass about it, but I'm not going to get bullied. If if it's not the same speed, I'll drop my speed. Speed and distance, speed and distance, obviously change when you need them. Um, but I, you just have to have a healthy respect. You get there when you get there at the end of the day when it comes to bad weather or even heels. You know, heels, if it's, suggest, if it's suggested 55 miles an hour, you know, I'll, I'll be like, 35, 40, because I'm still inexperienced. Now, when I get a little bit more experience, then I'll be similar, but I'm always going to be under the speed limit, always under what's suggested, you know, because I, I'm going to do what feels, what feels safe, you know, when I feel like I'm never going to lose control. Um, right. You know, and there's, there's even times when I'm, I'm only going 40 down and it's suggested 60 and I'm going around the corner, I'm a little heavy. And I think, oh, this feels just a little bit under the control. Again, tap, tap the engine brake a little bit more and drop my speed even further. Am I grandma? Probably. But you know what? I'm safe at the end of the day. So. One of the safest two drivers in the company. I'm, I'm a close wow. third. By the way, miles to go. I'll put a link in the stream if you want to pop in, sir. Click on that link. We can talk about some other things tonight. I'm going to get miles to go up on a, on a stream here in the next couple of days talking about he had a, he had a killer week. He made as much in one week as our team made in one week. And he drives he drives solo drive van. So I'm gonna get him up. Let me uh, let me show one more video. Uno momento. Um. Yes, ma'am. I, I think that's all I really have to add. You know, I've I've lived that. I've been the immigrant. I'm still the immigrant, you know, at the end of the day, regardless of my status, I still am, uh, you know, a foreigner that's, li that's living in another country that where I wasn't born in. And it's a privilege um, and an honor to be able to drive what I'm driving, do what I'm doing, have the uh, job, even though it feels like a lifestyle that I'm doing. And uh, it's never a right for me, never a right. Um, and just, uh, you know, Enter that with respect, you know, a, a healthy fear, not fear because then you get tippy toe and you get too, too much. And then you, you, you're on the opposite side of being too careful and you don't know what you're doing. Um, just a healthy, a healthy fear, healthy respect and just, you know, drive and, and, and be safe. I think that's, yeah. that's the way to describe it. You know? Let me add this. Let me add this next one to the stream. Hold on one second. This is what the trucker coming down the hill would have seen on the second. And again, this 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 sign went right by him or he went right by the sign. Truckers escape ramp. 2000 feet. And so that says now if you're in a Spanish speaking country on a Spanish road with Spanish signs, would you know what that means? And again, he's reading in English, trying to, which he can't. Oh, you're, I had one thing to, to add 
whenever we're ready. Yes, ma'am. Whenever. We're ready. Oh, uh, just uh, <laughs> be careful. I, you need to you need to dip down a little bit, girl. You need to dip down, dip down, dip down. <laughs> sorry, my I've lost I've lost half my my view, so um, I'm not quite sure where I'm at. Um, anyway, no. Uh, just another thing is, you know, and I've kind of done it myself. Uh, people that don't in this country, we'll just put it this way: that don't speak uh, decent English, they can people can memorize a lot of things like they can memorize all of the questions all of the answers for tests and pass with flying colors because they've memorized the sentence they've memorized the answers they know which answer to answer they can pass tests they can do everything um and so there's a lot of uh english comprehension that they can come along with but they still don't speak english because it's memorization and you know a lot of people that are, have a little bit less advantage they're going to try their hardest to be able to pass those tests to get those jobs, to be able to get those positions, to be able to do those, that job and that work. Um, and, and unfortunately, um, again, I, I have no, I have no say about it, but just, you know, they can pass a lot of that and seem like they speak English, but really the comprehension level is not as high as it seems just because of learning um, questions and answers and memorizing things, you know. So. Well, it's just a situation where, I, when I, looking at it, it's again a lot. Of, it's a lot of uh, emotions around this whole thing. Yeah, I know a lot of people. And I'm not talking to you, Hurricane. I'm talking to the audience. Uh, yeah. a lot of people from his culture felt he was overcharged. But when you look at the at the bottom of the hill where he hit him, and you look at all the people in their cars that burned. And you look at the number of deaths versus the video of him at the top of the hill coming down where he had multiple chances. And we can explain. That's one of the things, too. It's one of the things that an FBI profiler said. He said, quit giving people excuses for the for their behavior. He said, that's that's a very it's that's a very codependent way to treat people. You explain people's behavior away from your own perspective. He said, stop doing that. He said, if someone acts a certain way, says a certain thing, does a certain thing, it's probably because that's who they are. And you have to accept that people are not like you. It was much deeper than that. But like people like, well, it was, you know, he, he, I go back to what I said. He didn't speak fluent English. He did. He couldn't read the signs. His own, if you can watch him in court and see his own attorney had to lean in. You can see his attorney speaking to him in Spanish, not English. You see the different places the signs gave him warning. He didn't take advantage of them. You see the different places he could have pulled off and run into the weeds. Like most people that, that handle a, a major piece of equipment and say, no, I'm going to go ahead and ditch it here to save lives. Rather than go to the bottom of the hill and let people's cars be what stops you. Well, and you these know? are... These are rhetorical questions. They don't need the answers. But if it was you or I who ran into the bottom of the hill, would outcomes be different? Would opinions be different? Would, you know, would we have even done that? Because we could see, who knows? You know what I'm saying? If you put a different person or a different immigrant or a different perspective, because I am an immigrant, that spoke English, that read English, would the outcome be different? Or if the outcome was the same, would reactions be different? Again, it's all rhetorical questions, but, you know, it just kind of brings up questions, you know? Yep. Jesus uh, asks, once he comes out, would you hire him? I, I wouldn't want my company to hire the guy. Um, Jesus, if you're asking me whether it's right or wrong, I don't really care, you know, what you think about the right or wrong. It's my opinion. Um, I just think there's so many avenues that people like to go down to 10 years when you look at the bottom of the accident you see all the people that lost their lives in a fiery death from that it's just a it's just a situation where it's like there's so many things wrong it's like that i go back to the guy in the oil field he sat right there and she said what color is my top that i'm wearing he said yes she said what color are the shoes i have on he said yes he didn't speak the language i understand wanting to push your culture through and help them succeed i get all that but at some point, it becomes unfair to everybody else who is out here with you on the road. It just becomes unfair. Well, and 
being an 80,000 pound, 65, 75,000, 75-foot vehicle, the responsibility with that, there comes a lot of responsibilities with that job and that work, uh, more than just driving your four-wheeler. And there's a difference between that. You know, that's my thought on that too. You know? Carbon-based. Uh, by the way, Chris, how you doing, bro? He says that he's spoken with, with many people that said that they bought their CDL, they didn't earn their CDL. I believe that. Wow. I believe that completely. I believe that completely. Um, we had a question up here. Let me get back to this. We had a question up here. Let me get back to it. Yeah, that was like the third or fourth question, I think, wasn't it? Your, your brain. Your, 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 <laughs> <laughs> your Kesmat brains. Uh, this is from Troy. Advice in general for a new couple. I see y'all doing well. Yeah, Troy, I would tell you this, man. If you have any weakness in your relationship, the truck will uh, will shine a spotlight on it very, very quickly. <laughs> if you have any weakness, if you don't if you don't like being around each other all the time, like I think I think back. There's not many women I could have been with 24, 7, 365 for the last eight months. And we really have, haven't we, Hurricane? It's been it's been three feet pretty much. Yes, it has. It has. And we miss each other. That's the crazy thing. I don't, I don't know, Troy. I don't know of any, any other woman in my life to this point that I could have ever spent this much time with and been so happy. Um, I, I don't. And uh, I, I, I say that because the truck, and that's one of the things you got to keep in mind too, when you come out here as a couple, whether you're dating or married, you need to be ready for like, it's going to, like you're, you never are out of each other's sight pretty much no. other than in the shower, getting food, going to the bathroom. Other than that, you're in the truck moving One's behind the curtain, one's driving. But Troy, I'm telling you, man, don't make don't make this sound different than it, than it is. I wouldn't trade this last nine months for anything. Like it's been that good to find a woman who's exactly she's me, but she's prettier and tinier. You know, <laughs> she's an adventurer, she's fearless, she she loves traveling, she loves the trucking business. Oh, hey, it's can all, I say something, darling? Yeah, absolutely. Well, so I was at the uh, uh, the stylist and get my hair done, and you know they said like, you know, are you here on vacation? Because obviously we're at Virginia Beach. I was like, yeah, we're on vacation. What do you do for a living? Blah blah blah. Oh, I team drive truck with my husband. Oh, and they knew they knew that because they have some uncles and aunties. So they knew the kind of some of the the idea of it. And she just looked at me. She goes, you can stand it. You can stand each other that much. And I'm like, uh, yeah. You know, and, and it's almost like you could see, I don't know about her, but you could see people's opinions when you mention that, that even just good husband and wives with a healthy relationship of five years, 10 years, 20 years, would survive each other in a truck. So they it's, wouldn't. It's, they it's, wouldn't. A, it's, it's a beautiful relationship that we have, you know. They it's, wouldn't. I agree. Yeah. Shannon Thomas, I see you in the room, young lady. If you want to do a stream this week, we're going to be... Uh... We'll be traveling Tuesday, but we're pretty much stopped every night until Thursday, next Thursday. So if you got time to do a stream, catch us up on what's going on with you, please do. But it's uh, this whole business, Troy, for you and your you and your girlfriend or wife, man, it's going to expose. If you're willing to talk through it and you're willing to work through it, you'll be fine. But you're going to expose your relationship to the worst of the worst of the worst. And if you're not strong enough as a couple, it can be rough. Is that a good summation, Hurricane? It is. It is. Because it's like it's like you're you're the worst of the worst of the worst. But with that, the best of the best of the best, like bare naked right in front of each other in every aspect whatsoever. I'm not talking about physically, I'm talking about everything. You know, I mean you're in each other's everything, you know, because it's such a small space, you know, and um yeah, there's just everything we've we've experienced a lot together um and we've worked through a lot together as well it's not being all roses or anything you know we've, we've we've worked through a lot but we've we have patience for each other we've given each other that time that grace that space and um it's it's beautiful it's just beautiful can can i tell can i tell you guys i'm going to share something with you don't tell hurricane don't tell her let me share this with you guys just 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 among us you who's that talking Wait, don't tell Hurricane. Hurricane, don't listen to this. Don't listen to this. You know, she gets in my truck. 
She's a high school graduate. Left England at 16, went overseas. She talked herself down so much, which we've we've adjusted all that. She speaks three languages, English, Chinese, and Thai. She's an incredible artist. And I didn't know about that till two weeks ago. Had no idea. Had no idea. She just all of a sudden one day pops open some some drawings she made. And I'm like, I'm looking at her. And then she comes out here after everything she went through in the last year. And there's a video of her where I interview her back in. When did we do the interview, Hurricane? How long has it been? Uh, it was April, March or April sometime. Okay. So there's a video on my channel uh, that says a woman's tragedy, a woman's victory, I think is what the title yeah. is. Tragedy, triumph, and then just put our names and it'll pop straight up. A woman's tragedy, a woman's triumph. That's an interview I did with her before I ever met her. And she talks about really, really the last 12 months of her life prior to that, where she just had a really, like just everything that could go wrong and went and could uh, be taken from her was. Mm. And then she jumps in my truck. And I'm like, man, I know trucking is tough on most women because you got to worry about your, you know, your hygiene, who you're with. Women want to talk a lot more than I want to talk, which is, is that, is that true, Hurricane? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm, I'm tough and I'm very different, but I'm still a woman, you know, I'm still feminine and, you know. Uh, hey, Seuss, I think you threw a super chat. Thank you if you did. But uh, so anyway, she jumps in the truck and everything I was worried about proved to be wrong. Every single thing. Didn't know her, never met her. Um, she jumps in the truck, the divorce got finalized, and we began really, really just getting to know each other. And I'm a, I'm a no holds barred kind of guy, which is that true, Hurricane? Say that one more time, darling. I'm a no holds, I'm a no holds uh, type of yeah. guy, no holds barred. Absolutely. You know, some some dudes are like they don't communicate real well. I'm I'm either all in or I'm all out. There is no oh, middle ground. You're, I've you're never sometimes you know you you talk about everything and some and and you know. Uh, yeah, you talk about everything. Sometimes even grab me by surprise, you know, like, oh, okay, we'll talk about this as well, you know. So, Troy, when I'm talking to you about this, understand I do communicate different than a lot of dudes, but I never hung around dudes growing up. I played a lot of sports coming up, um, did very well in the military, around a bunch of dudes. I just don't hang around them when I'm on my off time. I enjoy the softness of a woman. But I've never met a girl like this. And all these things she's done, there are times I sit next to her sometimes and I'm like, I'm a former military guy, military officer, you know, pretty good athlete. And everything she's done in the truck has been just almost supernatural to the level to me that I'm just humbled to have her in my truck. So in my case, I back myself down because she does speak three languages. She is an amazing artist. She's five foot five and she's a better driver than me because her safety scores are higher than mine. And I'm a pretty damn good driver, but I'm still third in the company right now. She bounces between one and two right now while we're switching over ELDs. And she's only been driving for eight months. And there's like, there's nothing that scares her, bro. But we talk about everything. There's nothing we don't put out on the table and talk about. And so my point. There's sometimes things that we talk about that I prefer not to talk about. I not prefer to. You know, that's uncomfortable, but it's good that we talk about it because it's good stuff, you know? Um, we we have to address everything because we're so close in such close uh, proximity and quarters that you just have to address everything. You have to put everything out there. You have to speak about everything. And, you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of discussions that we have that most couples probably wouldn't have. Because, <coughs> you know, they're at work, they've got kids, they've got this, they've got that going on, and they don't have the time or the, the, the togetherness, you know. But we, we are just, everything's just pushed and pressed and, and you know shaken and and you know, it's it but it, at the end of the day it's good because it makes us strong we are strong we are we, we are. are let's it's answer good. jesus's question uh, a couple of people in the chat jesus are answering your question you get out in six in six months uh, probably in a year and in six months you can start taking courses for the cdl uh there's plenty of cdl practice tests online i would tell you to get obviously the first three tests you have to have to get to get your license while you have the time and the money, get all the endorsements, get them all, 
and, and you probably, if you don't, go ahead and get your passport and your TWIC card, your transportation worker identification card. But there's plenty of just Google CDL practice tests. It's a federal test. And sometimes the driving test has to be different based on your state, but the actual CDL test. And I'm telling you, man, this is a stupid business for money. And people don't consider it because, and especially right now, like I said the other night on my stream, one of my best friends who's a realtor who got me into real estate investing, he told me all the time, he's like, I've always done better under Democrats. Well, let me tell you, right now in trucking, we are doing phenomenally well under Demo Democrats. I don't really care who's in charge because my vote doesn't matter. I just want to make, I want to make as much as I can for as long as I can and win. Is that fair, Hurricane? It, yeah, it's fair. Yeah. And that's and, and that's happening as we speak. That is happening as we speak. It is. It is. How do you mean it is? You want to say something? We're just making we're making really good money. Uh we're working really hard for it, you know. It's and uh now's the time to do it, you know. Um that's why we've gone and we haven't stopped for seven months, because that now's the time. And um there's other avenues that we can also take that and invest and make even more. And we're just got our heads down and noses down and just moving forward. Is that too How, much? No, it's not too much. Let me ask you a question. I'm off camera right now because I got I got to text uh, the tenant in our property in Charlotte. Yes. Um, you've like for eight months. You just kept your nose down. Yeah. I mean, people don't realize I was at another company. So I had like my bags packed for another company and that wasn't working out. I was kind of sitting still. So I ended up moving over to Brothers Grimm and jumping in your truck uh, to be trained, blah, blah. So I jumped into that with training, but also we, we had quite a nice relationship at that time. Um, nothing else. <laughs> well, I mean, well, it was weird. Know. Yeah, it was. We had we had um, rules because I was you know, finishing the divorce. Becoming quite nice friends, but you know what? Let's let's have a look. And then you know, um, you know, we I've got learning a new skill. You know, because one thing is passing your test, another thing is actually doing the job. Learning a job, learning a new company, learning all of that, being trained, running down to Vegas, getting married. You know, I did all that. I didn't stop. I just jumped from one company to the next. I didn't go to a home. I didn't go back to my stuff. I didn't, I didn't do anything. Then on top of that, I cleared out a, a storage unit. I downsized a lot of my stuff that I, before I wasn't sure what to do with, um, closed up my life after being married, you know, got, got married, closed up my life and did all that within, you know, just a few days just to be able to get that done. And then we just, I just kept on running, just kept on running, kept on running, kept on running, you know? And you then, did. Then we got the the nasty uh, the nasty thing that's going around for three weeks that knocked us on our backs. I, I mean, I tell you what, I've been hospitalized with typhoid in Asia. I've had Jardia. I've had all kinds of, of the flus over in Asia. I mean, I've experienced it all. The H, I've had all the other different ones that you list, because I obviously I'm not going to say the names. I've experienced all kinds of stuff. And this just put me on my back. And, and it was probably one of the worst things I've ever had. We did three weeks of that in the middle of all of this. We had one week, one like seven, six day break. Other than that, we've been going, going, going. And it's been the best thing in my, the best thing I could have ever done. You know, is this break nice? Absolutely. You know, but it's just, it's just been a whirlwind of a trip and it's been an amazing lifestyle. <laughs> it has been. So anyway, the, the stream tonight, the I-70 trucker, you're going to see a truck driver tonight or tomorrow that gets in and out of the truck and they're 400 pounds overweight and you wonder how they pass their physical because they can barely move. Well, someone's helping them. You're going to speak. You're going to be speaking to somebody like, like hurricane did last week. Yeah. We were in, we were in TA and she heard the Chinese guy having a tough time understanding what he, what they were telling them they needed to bring back. He didn't speak good English and he's having to drop down the road reading the signs. One of the biggest mistakes I made with Hurricane the first two months in the business, I'm assuming she like I'm already assuming she knows the state. She knows the road. She, she sees the, uh, the the road signs and she reads English. 
but if you're not used to driving on these major inter interstates and you get into a major city and there's an exit here and exit there and exit straight, you got, you know, the you got lanes on the left to the express lanes that some states you can be in the express lane as a truck, some states you can't. And we're moving 55, you know, 60 miles an hour through those cities, those big cities. There was a lot that she had to kind of grasp, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and I realized that I was being too, I, I, I assumed, you know what, you know, assuming does, I assumed she knew all this stuff because she had been here living for, you know, the last, how many years you've been here? A year and a half? Uh, uh, about two, just over two years um, prior to jumping in the truck with you. You know, um, but I kind of have the little wife job, so the husband was always driving, so I didn't really pay attention. I mean, I paid attention, but didn't really. You know, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of things I, I I I learned as I was doing it, but you know, obviously I um, I read all the signs, but you know, just knowing what a frontage road is that runs alongside the interstate, you know, knowing that there's an exit ramp, an entrance ramp, knowing that the even numbers run west to east and the odd numbers run. E East to sorry north to south, knowing that the three three five or the four three five is the ring road around the city. Just, I mean, I have common sense, so a lot of that came naturally. But I still have to learn it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was a lot of there was a lot of learning, and a lot of people just assume I know it, you know. Um, so and I did. Times, yeah, there was times where you're just like, why didn't you just do this? And I'm like, if you don't understand, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that was the ring road, you know. Well, if it's not, if it's not, you know, forty four west, it's two four four. That's not forty four west, you know. Two four four is going to go around to, to forty four, but I don't know that. I think yeah. it's a completely different road, you know, yeah. or, or whatever, you know. So. Well, it's been it's been an amazing journey. I wanted to pop in tonight. She's uh, she had to, a lot of stuff she was getting done today. All the foo foo stuff with the spa and stuff. They put the horses back out this morning down at the bottom of us, so we're going to go for a horseback ride tomorrow or Sunday. Um, before we leave town, I got to still get a limo ride in with her, show her some of the area, mm. and we'll do a stream about that. But I wanted to talk about the I seventy thing because I've seen I've seen a lot of input on this online. I don't know what's right or wrong. I know how I feel, and some of the stuff I'm like, you know, ten years for all those people. I don't think that's right. I don't. And uh, if you can't read the sign, like this. If you can't read what that says, and you're driving in in a Spanish-speaking country on Spanish sign roads, probably going to have some problems. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's uh, it's one of those things where I'm like, there's no right or wrong. There's what you think about it at this point because I didn't, I wasn't on the jury. I wasn't part of the uh, the, the case. I find that ironic that what uh, that one trucker said that they filed bankruptcy right away and then reopened is a different, is, isn't that common? Don't we hear about that all the time? All the time. All the time. So listen, that's been the Bubble Bath Chronicles for tonight. I do have a stream with a gentleman who's done very, very, very well this last week. He made he made a lot of money driving solo and pulling dry van. A lot of money. Matter of fact, as much as almost our team, one of our teams made in a, in a week, he did very well. I'll have him on hopefully tomorrow or Sunday. We'll see how it goes. Hurricane, you want anything else, you gorgeous, fine young animal who's a little bit soaking wet? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> um, no, just that I know the responsibility of this job, this lifestyle. I know that I'm, when I'm behind the seat, that it is an 8,000 pound vehicle, it's 65 foot, 75 foot long. I know the consequences, and I am an immigrant, but this, it, I, I take this very seriously. You know, we can have a laugh that I'm only five foot and blah, 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 blah. But in the day, I take this, this work very seriously. The fact that this breakaway is really good for us because we're not in business mode. Because even though we might only work recently, have been doing the five days, a couple of days off, and then five days, every single day for us, if we're near the vehicle, whether it's bobtail or not, is business. And we take it very seriously. That vest that's on, that puts us in business mode is always on. So it, that's where I stand, you know, that's where I find it very, very 
uh, humbling to just, it's a privilege to be on the road and it's wonderful to be, have this lifestyle and it's wonderful to have this, this life with you and it's just amazing. And it's wonderful to have you in my life. Listen, let's stop the love fest on you and me. Bugatti, I see you in the room, brother. I'm, it's perfect timing. I'm going to leave your comment up till we, till we turn the stream off. <laughs> Red, Viking, Red Viking werewolf and? The hurricane. We are Vominos. You guys be good. God bless.